Being a Jew is being in the resistance all your life because you were always a minority. And you have to resist the trend, the outside trend, either to assimilate you, to convert you, or to kill you. Moshe Baron faced death many times as a member of the resistance movement against the Nazis and their collaborators. There were hundreds of thousands of fighters known as partisans, people who fought mostly behind enemy lines. Moshe was one of the estimated 20,000 to 30,000 Jewish partisans. He fought the Nazis for over two years. I was born in uh, a shtetl in Belarus, then Poland. Now it's a separate independent country in 1920. Uh, we were a family of uh, six, uh, myself and my brother and two, two twin sisters. Until 1939, we lived a quiet, normal, uh, without any big, uh, you know, aspirations, uh, life. All this has changed on September 17, 1939, when the Soviets invaded my hometown. Moshe's town was under Soviet rule for almost two years. At that time, Germany and the Soviets were allies and divided up Poland. But in June 1941, the Germans turned on their allies, the Soviets. In four or five days, coming from Eastern Prussia, they were in my hometown. Uh, they started issuing all kinds of restrictions of movement. For example, you were not allowed to use the sidewalks. You had to walk in the street. You had to wear the Star of David front and back. And uh, around uh, November, I think December 1941, uh, there's a new decree. Uh, we have to evacuate our homes and move to an assigned area. The 1,500 Jews of Moshe's town of Horodok were crammed into a ghetto of less than 20 houses. Life soon became desperate. A group of young people like myself, I was at that time uh, 21, began to talk among us, what am I going to do? Uh, there were two suggestions, you know, you can escape, but where do you go? Or we are going to resist. Moshe, his brother Josh, and a few dozen young people were selected to work building the rail system for the Nazis. They left Hordok and soon met hundreds of Jews from nearby towns, also serving as slave laborers. The area, which was heavily forested and swamps, if not for that, I wouldn't be sitting here. And there was building up a uh, resistance. Russian soldiers who had escaped when the Nazis turned on them formed the backbone of the partisan resistance. They were soon joined by thousands of local people conquered by the Germans who wanted to fight back. There was a lot of weapons left by the Russian army when they, uh, they retreated. Scattered, some of them was collected by farmers, and some of them was found around. And there was a beginning of a resistance in the forest by minor skirmishes attacking uh, individual Germans or something like that. Moshe and some Jewish friends hatched a plan to steal some weapons and use them to join a partisan unit. The two of my friends from the ghetto worked in a neighboring uh, warehouse where the Germans collected captured Russian weapons. And they were sorting it out, whatever they were doing. When they told me that, I don't know who started, but we worked at a plan where they would carry out parts of the weapons into the yard. There was a pile of junk wrap it up, hide it. With help from a fellow prisoner, Moshe escaped from the ghetto. I'm in the forest now, and one morning, there are two Russian officers walking through the forest. Naturally, I stopped them, I speak Russian, and I introduced myself, and they told me they were sent to the front line to organize the resistance movement here, particularly training people in sabotage, you know, mining roads, attacking garrisons and things like that. And it turned out to be two Jewish officers. And I told them they would like to join the, the, the resistance movement. I had weapons hidden in the ghetto. Moshe was safe for the time being, and he learned most of his family was too. They fled Horodok and ended up in a different ghetto in the nearby village of Krasny. Finally, Moshe arranged with a sympathetic farmer named Kowalski to smuggle his family out where they could hide on a farm. He also arranged with Kowalski to get the weapons he and his friends had smuggled into the ghetto, out of the ghetto. It was arranged that I will meet him and the partisans in a certain village and they will accept the weapons and accept me. 
but some non-Jewish partisans stole the weapons. Kowalski told him. They don't want to accept any Jews in the, uh, the partisans. So they took the weapons and they gave it to the locals, whom they knew. Without weapons, the Jewish boys couldn't join the partisans. And all around Moshe, things were getting worse. In July 1942, the Nazis murdered the last remaining Jews of Horodok, rounding them up into a barn, machine gunning them, and then setting the barn on fire. And the Jews of Krasny were all killed in March 1943. I finally joined the, the, the partisans. Uh, I was attached to a certain group. Uh, in the beginning, in 1942, uh, we were a small group uh, doing very little, just trying to survive ourselves, you know. Some people would go out on the uh, operation and raid a farm, just take whatever we could for ourselves. We built bunkers in the forest, you know, plenty of wood. For the winter, it's a Russian winter, it's 20 degrees below zero. In July 43, the Germans started harassing our, our groups throughout the whole territory because we were disrupting their supplies to the front line. We were mining roads, we were ambushing their uh, convoys on the highways, um, blowing up trains, and they had trouble supplying the fronts. They couldn't supply and they couldn't protect their back. And if they were retreating, we were, we were menace, menacing them too. So. When we knew that they are after us, we would retreat. In 1944, the Russian army closed in on the Germans, forcing their retreat. It was the beginning of the end of Moshe's nightmare. One day, we hear noise on the, uh, on the highway. Uh, here they are, the Soviet tanks and trucks and planes moving west. So you were free. Uh, I, we couldn't return to my hometown because my town, hometown was destroyed by our own people who came back. Uh, they took care of the collaborators and the head of the city hall, the mayor, and they burned the town. But Moshe was luckier than most. His mother, brother, and one of his twin sisters survived the war. The family reunited and after a difficult journey came to the United States and Moshe and his sister Minna settled in Pittsburgh. Why did I join the resistance? I wanted to, to live. <laughs> I, I knew what was coming. 